Hello, my name is Alan Foom and today I'm going to talk about the oil majors family histories. What is an oil major? A major oil company is a company which is involved in all aspects of the oil industry. Although a lot of them also do gas and all of them also do uh, electricity and other parts of the energy spe spectrum. So an oil company does exploration, production, development, refining, marketing, transportation and sales to consumers. So you may fill up at your local gas station which could be BP, Shell, Total, Exxon, or whoever. And these are the companies behind all of this. So a few months ago, I posted this on LinkedIn, and I'll go through all the different elements of this particular chart. And this is how the oil and gas industry evolved. These are how the major oil companies have concentrated their market share, their size, by effectively merging with other companies. And this is a family tree of all the different companies that have gone into that. The oil industry in the West began really as a commercial enterprise in the late 19th century, where the first commercial oil well was drilled in 1859 in Pennsylvania. And in the latter part of the 19th century, the man whose picture you see, John D. Rockefeller, established a company called Standard Oil, which took over a lot of the smaller companies and became effectively almost a monopoly within the United States. This naturally attracted a lot of irritation from politicians and uh, due to their monopolistic uh, behavior, and in 1911, using the antitrust laws, Standard Oil was broken up. So some of the descendants of Standard Oil are very much still here, in some shape or form. Standard Oil Company of New Jersey became Exxon. Standard Oil Company of New York became Mobil. Standard Oil Company of California became Chevron. Standard Oil Company of Indiana became Amoco. Standard Oil Company of Ohio became Sohio. So. In the 1950s, the Seven Sisters, the seven big oil companies, dominated uh, the oil and gas scene around the world. This was before the era of nationalization in countries such as Saudi Arabia, and these companies were dominant. The top row, you see the American companies, Exxon, or Esso, formerly Standard Oil of New Jersey, Mobil, formerly Standard Oil of New York, Chevron, formerly Standard Oil of California, Gulf, which is not a Standard Oil derivative, and Texaco, which not, was not a standard oil derivative either, although both of those two were American. And then you have the European majors, uh, BP, formerly British Petroleum, and the Anglo-Dutch giant Shell. So we'll look at each one of these individually. So here we have the family tree of ExxonMobil. So started off as the standard oil company in New Jersey after the breakup in 1911, and was led for a long time by this man Walter Teagle, who built it into the giant that it was took over the Humble Oil Company in 1959 and then had various uh, brand name changes and 1999 merged with Mobil which started off as a standard oil company in New York. In 2011, uh, 2010 sorry, they took over an American company called XTO which is a company focused on light tight oil, uh, shale, uh, shale oil, shale gas, shale fracking. So this is ExxonMobil. Chevron also had quite a colourful history, started off as the Standard Oil Company of California, uh, later adopted the Chevron logo as you can see. In 1983 they took over Gulf, uh, following quite a bit of takeover battle, and in 1999 they merged with Texaco, became Chevron Texaco and then became Chevron, and 2004 they took over Unical. Uh, Texaco then also took over Getty, and this was quite a, again, quite a fraught uh, takeover battle. Looking at the kings of takeovers, you look at BP. So founded in, uh, again in the 1910s as the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company and led initially by this man William Knox Darcy. They subsequently took over quite a few branches. So the top half were the American companies that took over. So initially taking over Sohio in the 1980s and then taking over Amoco in uh, 1999 and taking over Arco in 2000. This was led by this man here, John Brown, Lord Brown of Mattingly. Arco had also taken old companies called uh, Sinclair and Texas Eastern. On the uh, UK side, took over Britoil in the late 1980s, Britoil formerly BNOC, British National Oil Company, formerly state-owned company of the UK, and Burma, which is mainly focused on refining and marketing. They changed their name to BP Amoco in the early 2000s and then changed the name to BP with a Sunburst logo um, later on in the 2000s. If we look at Total, which is the French company, uh, initially founded as a Compagnie Française Pétrole by this man, Ernest Mercier, 
they were active all over the world. And in 1998, they took over FINA, which is a Belgian oil company. And 1999, took over ELF, which is the other giant French oil company to form a, G a French giant called Total FINA ELF. Later, that was just shortened to Total, a bit easier to say. And in 2017, they took over the assets of Maersk Oil, which was a Danish company, effectively part of EAP Mola, so that was sold on to them. Again, giant oil company operating all over the world. The Shell saga is also quite interesting. It was founded by these two men. So we, on the right, we have uh, Marcus Samuel, uh, Viscount Bering, Bersted, and here we have Henri Detterding. So there were two uh, companies, Royal Dutch and Shell, and they effectively combined in, um, in the early 1900s. Uh, subsequently worked all over the world to deliver things, but they did not buy very much in the past. They bought Enterprise Oil, which is a British independent, uh, originally spun off uh, from British Gas, and Fletcher Challenge in uh, 2000, 1999. 2016, they took over BG Group, um, a large uh, UK uh, gas company, oil and gas company, which I used to work for. Um, and they now are a big giant, again, operating all over the world. The Conoco Phillips um, story. Now, Conoco uh, started off as a continental oil company. They subsequently bought a company called Marland Oil in 1929. Like the logo so much, they decided to adopt the logo, then changed the logo. Conoco were for a time owned by DuPont, later spun off from DuPont. Phillips were also founded in the middle of the United States. They were formerly headquartered in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. They acquired a company called Tosco and uh, merged with uh, Conoco in 2002, I think. Uh, subsequently, they bought a company called Burlington Resources, which originally started obviously as a Louisiana land and exploration, and also had a company called Poco Petroleum, which had been taken over. Conoco Phillips had subsequently demerged something. So they demerged a company called Phillips 66, which is mainly the refining and downstream arm, uh, whereas Conoco Phillips, as is now, focuses mainly on upstream. So there's a change in corporate style, a change in corporate philosophy. ENI is the Italian major. It originally started off as Agip, which was a state-owned uh, holding company. And in the 1950s, they had a charismatic leader called Enrico Mattei, who transformed them into an international oil and gas major. Uh, they had, again, had operations all over the world. And from the 1990s to late 1990s, early 2000s, they took over quite a lot of small British companies. Uh, Lasmo, which had subsequently also had owned Ultramar. Uh, British Borneo, which subsequently had owned which previously had owned uh, Monument Oil and Gas and Burren Energy, again boosting their presence both in the UK and in Africa. Then we have the Norwegian major, which is uh, Statoil, which is a state oil company, which has subsequently changed its name to Equinor. So Statoil was founded in the early 1970s, uh, basically to uh, as a state owned company of, oil, of Norway to uh, take part in the North Sea oil boom at the time. There was also another Norwegian company called Norsk Hydro, uh, which uh, did hydropower, aluminium smelting, etc., which got in on the oil game. And Norsk Hydro took over a company called Saga, which was a Norwegian independent, and an American independent called Spinnaker. Subsequently, in 2000 and uh, in 2006, uh, Statoil and Hydro merged. Their oil assets, uh, Hydro is still continuing as an independent company doing other things. And Statoil also bought Brigham Exploration, an American uh, oil and gas company focused on tight oil in the in the early 2010s. In, uh, recently, they've changed their name to Equinor to move, basically to try to erase the oil out of the name. Uh, as part of the uh, situation, uh, they found that a Norwegian horse veterinarian and was actually calling herself Equinor, so they had to do a deal with her. Uh, but, you know, that's a, such as the parallel brand name. So what Equinor are doing is they're branching out beyond the traditional oil into renewable energy, wind, solar, and other f and other businesses to try to broaden their appeal. And then you have uh, Occidental, which is the last of the, uh, the majors. Occidental was formed in, 19, uh, in the early 1920s and was led for a long time by this chap called Armand Heimer, who was a, a a giant of American industry, and Army Hammer, the actor's great-granddad. Uh, they took over quite a lot of little com uh, medium-sized companies, such as Service, Blasted, Altura, Vantage Petroleum. But uh, in, 2000, in the late 2010s, 
They merged with Anadarko, a very forward-thinking American independent that had also bought up Kermagee and Union Pacific Resources to form a giant focused uh, primarily on the United States. So how important are the oil managers? This is a pie chart showing the uh, crude production by company type. So the majors, uh, oil majors here form slightly over 13% of um, world global oil production. Large majority of the world's global production, certainly the vast majority of the reserves, is owned by national oil companies. And this sliver here of just over 11% is Saudi Aramco, the national oil company Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Aramco produces almost as much oil as all the other majors combined at far lower costs. These are the other OPEC Gulf NOC, so people like, such as Adnoc, uh, the Iranian oil company, NIOC, etc. And uh, the red slice is the Russian oil companies. And these are the relatively small independents, and these are the ones that are not accounted for. So these are very small companies, either both national or international. This graph shows the production of oil and gas in barrels of oil equivalent per day. So red is oil, sky blue is gas. So ExxonMobil is the top one of, of um, the, the majors, followed by BP, followed by Shell, followed by Chevron, Total, Equinor, ENI, ConocoPhillips. Now, this chart was made prior to the merger of Oxy and Anadarko. So if you combine these two together, they'll fit in about here. So these are put together from company reports in 2018. The Oxy and Adarko manager ha merger happened in 2019. So what next for the majors? Challenging times, significant headwinds. You're in a situation where you have low oil prices for the time being. Some of it's due to COVID, but there was a secular decline before that. High costs, particularly for the majors relative to the NOCs. And where's the growth? Exploration has not been that great for most of the majors, with the exception of ENI, who have been consistently very successful, and Exxon, who have been very successful lately, particularly in Guyana. Equinor, Statol have also been had quite a bit of a fair bit of success, as have Total. The other is a bit less so. And then there's the uh, forward uh, situation with energy transition and peak demand. What will happen? How will it happen? How will the majors respond? How they will take part? The different responses between the Europeans and Americans. The Europeans, because of their societies, are more attuned to climate change, are keen to diversify into other things, and BP have particularly been vocal on that with their new chief executive, Bernard Looney, but the other Europeans have been doing it, just talking about it a lot less. The USA companies tend to want to stick to what they know best, which is traditional oil and gas, although they do have investments in other things as well. But final point is I would not overestimate, underestimate the majors. Been around for over a century, faced difficulties, nationalization, OPEC, etc. Overcome significant challenges, so I wouldn't write them off just yet. They'll adapt, they'll thrive, and they may well be quite different to what they were before. But they've been around for a long time, they intend to be around for a long time, delivering the goods for their shareholders. Thank you very much.